This video will be a two for one tutorial. Firstly, it will introduce you to the special attribute on open asset, which will give you the superpower to override what happens when someone double clicks to open an asset from the project view in Unity. Secondly, it will provide you all the code you need to create a quick audio previewer. Now, this is something I know that irritates a number of people using the application. So stay to the end to make sure you get all that code that you need to create that free tool. So let's start with the problem. If you've used Unity for some time, you'll know that previewing an audio clip, uh, it's a bit of a pain. You could add it to the component and then run the play button and then listen to that audio playback, but that takes a long time. Now, you could also double click on it in the project view and it will open in whatever terrible application you have defaulted. Again, taking some time. Now, alternatively, you can press this small button in the corner of the inspector's preview window, which will automatically play any audio clip when it's selected in the project view. This is a good feature until the point you start wanting to change a lot of imported audio clip properties. And then you have to listen to every audio clip in turn just to change those properties. So let's fix this by making Unity play the clip whenever it is double clicked by the user without having to launch another application or use that also play functionality. Let's create a new C sharp script and we're going to call this audio previewer and we'll open this up in Visual Studio. Okay, so this isn't going to be a mono behavior and we won't need these using statements and we also won't need any of that. Now we're going to make this a static class and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create the function for that attribute, which is on open asset. And this comes from Unity Editor callbacks. Now this is going to be a public static method, but it's going to return a ball and that's important. I'll explain why in a minute. And we're going to have on open asset. Now this takes in a couple of ints, which are basically the IDs that we use to locate the object we're actually interested in that we've clicked on in the project view. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use the editor utility and that will enable us to use instance ID to object. And funnily enough, there it is. There's our instance ID to return. So this is going to provide us the object that we're actually interested in. So we'll just come in here and we'll say unity engine object and then give it object. Don't like that. There we go. Okay. So this has got the instance ID, which we need to spell correctly. There we are. Now we've got to check whether this object is actually an audio clip because that's what we're interested in. So we'll say if object is audio clip, then we'll do something. Oh, and we won't worry if it's not, but we need to return. And here's the interesting thing. You can still enable the default functionality of opening a file in a particular application, or you can tell Unity, no, I've controlled what's happened. Don't actually do the default functionality. And what you do is you do this by returning true or false. If you return true, you tell Unity, no, I've took control of this asset. You don't need to do anything. If you return false, in the case of the audio clip, it would still open your default audio application. So, we're not interested in open the default. We're just going to return true. Now, just to see that it's working, we're going to do debug log audio asset opened. There we go. We'll save that and we'll jump back into Unity. So back in Unity, again, we'll come down to our audio. And now if I double click this, it will actually come up with audio asset opened. It's running our debug log. It's not actually launching the application like it did for default. So we can see that this functionality works and you can use this for other file types. So if you're over your own data asset, for instance, and a corresponding editor window, this attribute may be one of your best new friends. So let me know if you plan to use it in the comments and for what file types. So before we get back to finishing the audio preview code, if you're getting something out of this or any of the tutorials on this channel, consider hitting the like button. And if you haven't already, maybe subscribe to the channel. And unlike Fight Club, it's highly encouraged to tell everyone about this channel. So on with the code. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to create a static function 
which we'll call play preview clip. And this is actually going to be the thing that plays the audio clip we're interested in. So audio clip, audio clip, there we go. Now, this is going to be a little bit hacky. Uh, so just be aware of that. This functionality basically looks at a class in Unity that they don't expose and then uses a method from that to go ahead and play the audio because there's no easy way to just play the audio in the Unity editor as it is. You have to run the scene and then play it there. So we're just gonna hack it and get this done. But be aware, this may change in future. So if it suddenly stops working, you know why. They changed the name before, but they've never got rid of it. So hopefully it will stay. So we're gonna call this Unity Assembly. We're gonna use reflection to get the actual method from one of Unity's classes. So first thing we need to do is get the assembly. And I know for a fact it's under the same assembly that uses the audio importer, which should be pretty obvious. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to need the type. And that comes from the system. OK, now the type is the audio util, utility, basically, but it's called audio util. So from the assembly, we're going to run get type. And you've got to make sure you get the lettering, case, and all the rest exactly right. Otherwise, this won't work. But it's unity editor dot audio util. OK, now we're going to need to get the method. So what this does is it basically looks at the class and gets this method so you can then invoke that method and run the functionality. Now, a little tip, if you're looking to get methods like this, what you can do is if you get the type and you know the type, you can then do a breakpoint on this and look at what methods are available. And then you can write one of these method infos and use it yourself. So that's just a little tip. So we're going to use audio util, get method. Now, again, you have to write this exactly as I'm doing, play preview clip. And this is the, the functionality that they changed previously, the name. Um, oh, and comma, there we go. And we'll write in binding flags. Now I'm not going to explain everything that's happening here because that isn't really what this tutorial is about, but I'll make sure to put a link in the description to where you can get more information on how to do this sort of work. So new system. This is now just going to be the object that we're going to pass through. So type of audio clip. You're basically setting up a sort of uh, fingerprint on how this function is set up. So type of int 32. And that int is actually the start where it's going to start the audio clip. And you also can pass in the boolean. And this boolean is actually whether this audio clip will loop or not. And we press null. And we finish. Oh, I'm using the wrong bracket there. We finish there. So now we've got the method info. We're actually going to invoke that method. OK, so we run invoke. We don't have an object. We're going to create a new fingerprint. And we're just going to use clip, zero, and false. And that should have been audio clip. There we are. OK, now let me explain a little bit of what we're doing here. So we've got the assembly that we're interested in. We get the class type. There we are. And we get the method from that. That is play preview clip. And we set everything up to run and then we actually run it. Now, as I said, this is audio clip. You can send in an integer here, which will be where the audio clip starts. And you can tell it to loop whether you want to or not by just sending in uh, another parameter here, which is loop. But in our case, we just want to play it straight off. So instead of this debug log, we won't be needing this anymore. What we're going to do is we're going to play the audio clip and we'll need an audio clip. There we are. Audio clip and that is everything. So we'll jump back into Unity. And now if we select an item and we double click on that item instead of opening the default window, we get the sounds.
Perfect, just what we wanted. Do let me know what you think in the comments. Will this save you from pulling your hair out or is it a performance step a little too far for you? If it does save you some of your beautiful hair, then I'm sure the next video on screen will save the rest.